Welcome back to the citizens and aspiring citizens to the kingdom of heaven. Now, this is the third part of the three-part series that we're doing about you always were, you are right now, and you will always be. Mankind is an eternal spirit. We were in the beginning with God. We are right now, as you know, but when we leave here, we will go back to God to be judged. Okay? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about what Jesus told his disciples when he's getting ready to leave. In the book of John, beginning uh, with verse 1 of chapter 14 and ending at verse 11. And here's what Jesus says. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. And you know the way to where I am going. No, we don't know, Lord, Thomas said. We have no idea what, where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you had really known me, you would have known who my Father is. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus replied, have I been with you all of this time, Philip? And yet you still don't know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I speak are not my own, but my Father who lives in me does the work through me. Just believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe because of the work you have seen me do. Do you see this? When Jesus left here, he said he's going to prepare a place for the saints, for the citizens of the kingdom of heaven. And when it's all said and done, he's going to come back. But he said nobody would know the day nor the hour, not even the angels in heaven. Nobody knows but the Father. Are you ready? Are you ready to meet Jesus when he comes back? He said when he comes, he will have his reward with him. And he will be able to pay every man and every woman according to their deeds. And that means of children who are at the age of accountability, who understand the right from wrong and know what's going on. Okay, we're going to go on and read another passage. We're going to read in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. This is Paul talking about our new bodies. Remember now, you just see my earth suit. You don't see me. <laughs> and when I look at you, I don't see you. I just see your earth suit. It's just like a slug in a shell, a snail's shell. You know the slug gets out and so forth and on, and he go back in and he ducks and hides. Oh, what a beautiful snail. Well, you just see the shell. This is what you're looking at right now. The shell, you don't see me. Okay, let's go on and read and 2 Corinthians chapter 5, starting with verse 1, and we will read through 16. And this is what Paul is saying, okay? For we know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, that is, when we die and leave this earthly body, we will have a house in heaven, an eternal body, made for us by God himself and not by human hands. 
we grow weary in our present bodies and we long to put on our heavenly bodies like new clothing. For we will put on heavenly bodies. We will not be spirits without bodies. While we live in this earthly body, we groan and sigh. But it is not that we want to die and get rid of these bodies that clothes us. Rather, we want to put on our new bodies so that these dying bodies will be swallowed up by life. God himself has prepared us for this. And as a guarantee, he has given us his Holy Spirit. So we are always confident. Even though we know that as long as we live in these bodies, we are not at home with the Lord. For we live by believing and not by seeing. Yes, we are fully confident and we should rather be away from these earthly bodies. For then we will be at home with the Lord. So whether we are here in the body or away from the body, our goal is to please him. Amen. For we must all stand before Christ to be judged. We will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or evil we have done in this earthly body. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. We're going to go on to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 beginning at 13 talking about the hope of the resurrection. Oh, precious people, I'm just touching on the subject. And there's no way in the world I can exhaust this. I will be forever in a day. So let's go on and talk about the uh, hope of the resurrection in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse beginning at verse 13. And now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died so that you will not grieve like people who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. We tell you this directly from the Lord. We who are still living, when the Lord returns, will not meet him ahead of those who have died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. First, the Christians who have died will rise from the graves. Then, together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. So encourage each other with these words. Let's encourage each other. When we leave, when our loved ones leave who are in Christ, we're not grieving as though we have no hope. Because if we continue and remain in Christ, we will be able to see them again. Because let's talk about this. Acts. In Acts chapter 1, when Jesus had finished his course after he had walked around 40 days on earth after the resurrection and seen by all these different people, he's getting ready to believe and he called his disciples together. And it's in Acts chapter 1. And when he was telling them to do not leave Jerusalem, but go and stay there until they receive the Holy Spirit and that they will have power to be able to do what they need to do on this earth. They will be given power after the Holy Ghost has come upon them. Well, when he finished saying that, he was received up into heaven. And this is in Acts chapter 1, and at us, beginning at verse 9. He was received up into heaven, and his disciples were just standing there, gazing, watching him as he ascends up and up and up to the place from which he came. And then there were two men dressed in white, dazzling white, and I'm assuming, and you probably will too, that they were angels. 
And they said, you men of Galilee, why stand you there gazing? This same Jesus that you see going away is going to come back in the same like manner. Oh, and that's what we were talking about in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. We just read. He's going to come back for the saints. Precious people, mm, when you die, it's not all over. Encourage those who you hear talking about trying to commit suicide. Look, save these YouTube uh, videos and know what we're talking about and recommend it to them and send them a link and let them know it is not over when they leave from here. Oh my goodness. Because if man sheds man's blood, by man shall the blood be shed. But if man sheds his own blood, and I'm talking about mankind, women, boys, girls, and whatever, that's premeditated. You don't have anybody. You can't ask for forgiveness before, you see. So you have to be very, very, very careful. Don't take your life. Get to know Jesus. Oh, he loves you so very much. Oh, he has so much in store for you. When you came into this world, you came with the job description. You just have to ask him well, what it is. And he will be too happy to reveal it to you. If you need some more uh, talking about this, and uh, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and, and uh, type in some suggestions. What is it that you want to know? I just say you can find anything on YouTube. And I praise the Lord for YouTube. Oh, but I'm so sorry about all the censoring. And I hope that what I'm saying won't be censored and you won't get a chance to know about it. Because you need to know this. There is life after death. Okay? Now, yeah. I want to tell you something. When Jesus was hanging on the cross, and when he cried out with a loud voice that it was all over, and the veil of the temple was torn from the top down to the bottom, Dead saints got up out of the grave and were seen walking around on the streets of Jerusalem. And people saw them. You see, it's not over. Just because you died, that's not the end. You will uh, get new bodies. And you will be in the presence of the Lord or you will be in the presence of the devil. Oh, don't let him trick you. See, the, the word of God says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, if this gospel is hidden, it is hidden from those whom the God of this world, oh, sloop of the devil, the God, has, he, he has blinded your mind. He doesn't want you to know the truth. Don't settle for that. Listen, if you're the only one, you don't worry about your friends. You can't be concerned about your family. No, -uh. if they don't want to go with you, go by yourself. There's so much on YouTube. You don't have to worry about trying to hunt everything for yourself. You just type in a subject and it'll start pulling stuff up. Oh my goodness, precious one, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Confess him with your mouth. Say that you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and he came to save you from your sins. Confess your sins. Tell him you're sorry for your sins. Repent of them. Turn around and stop doing what you've been doing. You already know what's wrong. Nobody has to tell you. You know. Stop doing it, precious ones. Live for the Lord Jesus and be blessed. All right? If this series is a blessing to you, don't forget to subscribe. And you will know whenever I post another video. Also, click like, make comments. The Lord bless you. And just know that I love you. But Jesus loves you so much more. He made you for himself. Amen. Bye-bye.